As just about every Mass Effect fan knows, the endings of Mass Effect 3 are between controversial and downright bad. However, with the next Mass Effect game in development, now seems like a good time to revisit the endings, discuss the hypothetical outcomes of each, and see which will most likely link to the next game. This will be the coverage of the endings as they exist in-game, so the indoctrination theory will only be briefly mentioned. Before reaching the actual endings, the player first needs to sit through an unskippable dialogue sequence between Shepard, Anderson and the Elusive Man for control over the Citadel. After defeating the Elusive Man, she Shepard opens the Citadel arms, allowing the Crucible to be docked, and has a moment with Anderson, or before attempting to activate the Crucible and being brought in front of the Catalyst. In the original version of Mass Effect 3, there was apparently a hidden two-minute timer which would cr uh, trigger the Game Over screen, likely as an unofficial version of the Refusal ending. The same Game Over screen is triggered in the event that the player tries to change their decision after picking an ending in path something that is still present in Legendary Edition, as seen here. Let's get the most obvious one out of the way first. The Refusal ending will not be the canonical ending. However, there is more to it than just an instant win for the Reapers. Upon realising that nothing was happening, Hackett would presumably order a full retreat from the Reapers. With this failure, which would come with the loss of Commander Shepard and much of the uh, ground forces is uh, sent to battle the Reapers on Earth, the various species would most likely scatter and start looking out for themselves, making it easier for the Reapers to dominate. Once the Reapers had completed the cycle, they would return the Citadel to its original position, with the signal to the Keepers re-established, and return to dark space to await another 50,000 years to, is for the cycle to end again. Leaving the spacefaring species of this cycle are remembered only through the e wounds left behind, and the recordings made by Liara to help those who came next. Or would they? Based on an altered version of the epilogue, exclusive to this ending, it is possible that at least one species survived the Reapers. In this epilogue, the person telling the story of Commander Shepard uses an Asari character model, and is voiced by a female narrator as opposed to the person in the other three endings. Although this is almost certainly a model reuse with no further purpose other than trying to maintain the tone of the scene rather than using two Yark character models, there is the possibility of it being more than that. It is possible that a group of Asari attempted a plan equivalent to or similar to that made by the Eprothians under Javik's command, and it would have a much greater chance of working if, if tried by the Asari, as a much smaller number would be needed. If this in, in fact were the case, perhaps with Liawa herself being among these, the Asari would be able to begin again in the new cycle and fulfil the plans that had failed in the current cycle. Despite being the blue version of the ending, Control is likely the renegade option due to it fitting with the approach of the elusive man the most, as Shepard assumes direct control over the Reapers and gets converted into an AI, with this version of the pulse in the cutscene presumably containing the ability to reprogram the Reapers. This is also the main source of legitimacy for the indoctrination theory, given how the only beings who argued for controlling the Reapers, a group of Protheans during Javik's era, and the elusive man, were confirmed in game to have been indoctrinated by the Reapers. After Shepard becomes the Reaper AI, all the Reapers are directed to retreat and are later used to rebuild the damaged mass relays, along with assisting at least certain species in rebuilding, with the Reaper being seen in the background of the Geth image of the ending sites, along with several rebuilding areas of Earth and the Citadel. However, it's unknown what would happen in the long run beyond the details in the ending montage and whether the indoctrination generated from the Reapers has still remained. Although the two main options were that Shepard's AI either committed to maintaining in galactic peace or chose to return the Reapers to dark space permanently. In the final speech, the specifics of uh, Shepard's dialogue changes based on, on choices made throughout the game, such as Paragon and Renegade score, and choices such as uh, as those made on Tuchanka. Also, I forgot how boring and vaguely repetitive this speech is, with, and the constant use of the line The one who could save the many just makes it feel hollow and meaningless unlike the other speeches. Personally, I hate the synthesis ending. At face value, this is viewed as the happy 
ending, given Edie's monologue, and that's Kasumi gets a digital version of her ex, and, and how it's the one ending to have all factions unite in peace. But when you start thinking about it in depth, it has issues. The first of which being the fact that the explanation for how it works is left extremely vague. Unlike the other two endings, where it's uh, clearly defined what will happen to Shepard, and how their decision will impact the rest of the galaxy. In specifics. Also, it's at least easy to rationalise the other two endings as sending out pulses across the mass relay network, well, but I don't see how that can be applied to the synthesis ending, given how it forcibly changes everything in the galaxy on a fundamental level, well, after Shepard leaps into the beam generated by the Crucible, which somehow mixes their DNA with synthetics and organics, and then transmits the result across the galaxy using the mass relays. It's so vaguely defined that I don't think any version of Commander Shepard would ever choose it, especially as the closest thing they would have had as a point of reference was what Saren was planning while indoctrinated in the late stages of Mass Effect 1. Secondly, what happens to the various types of Reaper husks in this ending? In the cutscene, they're just seen in slowly backing away after something happened to them, and rather than being wiped out by the Crucible's wave of energy, or staying under the control of the Reapers. The two most direct ways of interpreting this scene is that the husks see the became newly independent beings, or, or each husk regains their sentience of or they had been prior to being taken over and transformed by the Reapers. The latter idea has terrifying implications on its own, and becomes even worse when you consider a certain enemy types linked to the Reapers in Mass Effect 2 and 3. He are made up of multiple all beings, such as, or most notably, with the Brutes being a combination of Torian and St. Krogan. So perhaps CD's speech of peace and immortality he isn't so great after all. Represented by Anderson in the explanation, and the destroy ending is likely the Paragon ending, despite it's the secondary impacts on, inflicted on the Geth and Edie. Also, it's the only ending to have a variant where uh, Shepard survives without change, so if Bioware want to bring in Shepard somehow into the next Mass Effect game, this is the most likely one they go for. The way this ending plays out is the most basic way, as uh, Shepard just shoots part of the uh, Crucible in order to activate it, with varying levels of effectiveness, based around how much of the game has been completed. Although, even in the best version of the ending, the mass relays were hev are heavily damaged, likely to be solely repaired through data files from the Protheans. As a result, the ending slides, especially those including characters such as uh, Rex, Grunt or Smara, who are going to their home planets, presumably take place a, a significant amount of time after the main ending speech. Regarding the Geth, there are ways for them to still make an appearance in the next Mass Effect game, even if this ending is featured. This is mainly through the way that they did not remain bound to the same limitations as, a, as the organic species in the Mass Effect galaxy regarding space travel. Thus it would be likely that groups of the mechanical species were sent to explore areas of space beyond those connected by mass relays in the 300 years between their creation and the events of Mass Effect 3, placing them outside the range of the mass relays and the Reapers. The catalyst reference is that the species of the galaxy would be able to eventually rebuild other forms of mechanical intelligences opening up the potential for the cycle of conflict to re-emerge without the, without the Reapers involved in such a cycle. Which some used to argue means that this ending solves nothing in the long term. On a similar note, the final speech from this ending references that everything could be reconstructed, which presumably involved constructs equivalent to the Geth. Along with the main and common ending slides, there are a handful of rare slides that many may not have seen, such as one for Morden in the outcome where he agrees with Shepard to get to side against the Krogan, which shows him continuing his work on a genophage cure. Meanwhile, one that is seemingly absent from Mass Effect's legendary edition is one of a non-loyal Samara hunting down Morinth, and continuing her work as a Justicar. Well, there is also an alternative version of the uh, speech from the Destroy ending if you have an extremely low score. Based on the teaser for the next Mass Effect game, the refusal and synthesis endings are immediately ruled out given Liara's presence, and the fact that her character model doesn't seem to have the the synthesis filter uh, on her character model that all the characters were given in the, the synthesis ending. There is also an argument to be made for control being ruled out due to the destroyed mass relays and crashed reapers. However, the destroy ending seems the most likely to be to be the ending, give all well, that connects to the next Mass Effect game, especially if they want to add command or references to post-game Shepard. Despite this, Content released about the next Mass Effect game heavily implies that the Geth will play a role in the story somehow, or at least appear in it in general, which would suggest that this ending could be altered or retconned in some way, 
or that the e control ending is in fact the one that will get used. If you're watching this as a pre-existing subscriber, th firstly, thanks for watching this far into the video. Secondly, thanks for getting me a beyond 100 subscribers. Thirdly, to uh, subscribers and returning views in general, thanks for getting my Stars The Force Unleashed retrospective to over 7,000 views. Thanks for watching.